Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about spending money on Magic the Gathering. I know last video was saving and spending money, but I wanted to elaborate a little bit more um, and about my own spending or my own finances. A lot of you ask how much money I spend on Magic, how much money do I spend on cards, fat packs, uh, calendars. I have a giant Magic calendar which weighs like you guys have probably seen it in the MTG line monthly video, but that calendar weighs like it's really heavy. Um, uh, play mats, supplies, all that type of stuff. So on supplies, I will order supplies once every, I say two and a half months, and I'll order play mats. Uh, normally, anime play mats. Or I'll go ahead and commission a play mat, or yeah, I spend quite a bit. I would say I spend if you averaged it monthly. So I'm going to try to break it down monthly. I spend about a hundred dollars a month on sleeves, boxes. Play mats. A lot of those play mats, not really magic related. Sometimes a lot of Card Fight Vanguard play mats because they are, a lot of them are more of my um, style. If you understand, um, sleeves and stuff like that. Uh, tokens. I don't. I spend quite a bit on Weiss tokens. I, I use them mainly for magic. I don't know how to play Weiss, and most of the anime I have never actually seen. I just like them as tokens, right? Uh, so about $100 on magic supplies. I go to um, my Friday Night Magic, and let me clarify about this, is I don't pay money for it at one locals. And I'm very good friends with the owner of that locals. Uh, it is a video game store slash anime store slash kind of a magic store. The only reason they were even considering magic was the same distributor, well, Bushy Row. Um, they have a good relationship with Bushy Row. And they get a lot of play mats and promos and oh Ami Ami. They also order a ton of stuff from Ami Ami, like hard sleeves. And out of the hundred dollars of supplies, I probably spend on about eighty bucks there and probably twenty on Amazon Prime. Uh, for like hard sleeves that I cannot find or something. And so I very, very cool store. Uh, but they do carry a lot of they do carry magic supplies, but their Friday night magic is like four people, five people. It reminds me a lot of Groovy Geckos in Virginia, and that's a store that I really became um, that I played magic at for a long time, and I had the most fun. I was at that store at Groovy Gecko, Groovy Geckos in Williamsburg, Virginia. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, it bankrupt like eight times, and finally it just couldn't redesign itself, I guess. Uh, but that store is now gone. But it reminds me of that store. It's four or five people. Uh, we all know each other. We're all good friends with each other. And we play magic. Just play magic. And uh, it so happens that this video game store also carries magic cards. Now, Friday Night Magic um, is typically, again, it's not, I don't pay money for it um, because I buy so much product. And we'll get to the product later of how much. It sounds like I'm talking about some type of drug or something, but no, it's magic products. Uh, and it's not really what I buy, it's just how much in one time I can buy. So if you look at it from the aspect that I've purchased a case, yes, at least a case from that place for every set starting from, from RTR, including Journey into Nix and all those really bad sets in the middle. Um, and that's really to support it. So it needs to reach like X amount of sales before it hits like another level. And then once it hits another level, then everything becomes a lot cheaper. So I spend, I buy at least a case. I would say I spend on average maybe a thousand dollars a set uh, at that one store. And then at my other locals, I'll buy like a case of fat packs, or I'll get my fat packs from that locals because the video game locals does not sell fat packs; they only sell boxes. And the other locals. I mean, they barely even, like, I'll be honest, they don't even sell boxes. They just sell boxes to, like, me and my friends. Um, and we buy enough to justify the existence of uh, the magic in the store. Um, the store owner doesn't really carry singles. I mean, he has some singles next to his Pokemon cards, but that's not really. Uh, or next to Weiss. So he has a lot of Force of Will. He has a lot of Bushy Row products. All his products are Bushy Row, minus the limited amount of magic products he gets. Now, at the other store, it's mainly a Magic Slash Yu-Gi-Oh store, so it is a comic book store. Uh, it is definitely more 
card friendly, meaning that they are not like video games. They don't. They do anime now, but they didn't do anime until like like a month ago. But they are not um, relate. The stores are very different stores. So I spend about a fat pack a set from that store, and as you guys can see, I open most of my fat packs on camera. Uh, boxes I don't really open that much. Um, that many boxes on camera outside of hopefully you know after pre-release. Uh, so love both stores. I do spend money in both stores, and I would say on average, I a month if I divided by twelve my yearly spend. Uh, and on singles, singles I buy a lot on TCG Player. Um, I buy a lot from Dave and Adams. Dave and Adams is amazing for a lot of products, a lot of sealed. <laughs> I'll be honest, I buy, I go to Dave and Adams to buy Dragon Maze most of the time, and then I'll pick up like Inuyasha and other sporting cards too. I spend a lot of money on National Treasures, which if you collect baseball or any sports, you'll know what that is. And, and Exquisite, those are the two um, boxes I open a lot of. So I would say on average, I spend about Let's say fourteen hundred dollars. No, that's too much. Like, cause I got divided. Cause set doesn't release until like every two and a half months. So I'll say like seven hundred dollars on Magic cards uh, a month. But that being said, a lot of it is mitigated by the fact that I do a tremendous amount of not like a super duper amount anymore, but I do a tremendous amount of selling cards when they are hot. So I can recoup, out of $700, I can recoup mm, 250 of it in cash and then the rest in trade. So the money that I would spend to buy legacy staples or modern, mostly modern staples now. Legacy staples, I just call EDA staples now because there's no difference to me. And I can recoup a lot of that expense. Um, so a lot of the more expensive cards, I actually get right after a pre-release, if you can believe that. Um, when these cards are new and these cards are, um, and you're the only one who has them, it becomes extremely easy to trade into any cards from any trade binder because it's new and is a hot commodity. I, I never have any problems moving planeswalkers, foil or non foil or cards in playsets. If you can get a Elder Dragon in a playset during pre release, there will be definitely be someone who'll trade it for to uh, trade for that Elder Dragon. The same goes with Narset um, because people are very excited and they should be and it's nice to have trade bait into cards that uh, you normally would have to pay cash in and that's primarily why um, when I spend money on Magic a lot of it gets recuperated. Um, it's not wasted. In the next video I'll make a video about like the easiest ways to waste money in Magic um, and I think that's pretty important like to avoid these traps. Um, and these traps are sometimes set by stores and I'll get into detail about how Star City Games kind of sets a trap for a lot of consumers. Bye guys!